Welcome to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight it's win or go home as a spot in the AHA semifinals awaits Sacred Heart or RIT. After being held scoreless in game one, Sacred Heart finally solved Tommy Scarfoni in game two last night. The Pioneers scored three times en route to victory while evening this series at a game apiece. Tonight, it will be the final game in this building for Will Calverly and nine other Tiger seniors as they'll be looking to extend their careers with a win that would send them to the conference semis for the first time since 20. 19. Oh, we're looking forward to it. Good evening. I'm Kevin Roach and welcome to RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Well, it's not quite a game seven, but it's still an elimination game here tonight. Arguably the most exciting and anticipated game in hockey or in any sport for that matter. Let's show you how we got here by showing you game two from last night. Sacred Heart looking not only to even the series, but to solve Tommy Scarfoni, as I mentioned, who shut them out in game one. Just under eight minutes to go in the first. Pioneers on the rush. Dante Paleco top shelf by Scarfoni. And after over 82 minutes and 24 seconds without scoring, Pioneers finally get on the board thanks to Paleco's third on the season. one nothing. Sacred Heart after one in the second. More Pioneers. Initial shot. Shot, goes off Scarfoni. Adam Tisdale there for the easy putback. His second goal of the season. Both Sacred Heart goals coming from their fourth line. And then just over a minute later, Pioneers on the attack. You see Kobe Walker blocks the shot there. He goes down on the ice. The pike leaves the zone. Actually goes to the other end of the ice. And then here comes Sacred Heart. No whistle on this play as Braden Tuck scores. His 12th on the year. As play resumed, Walker would be okay. But it was 3-0 Pioneers. Tiger had to get going on the power play here. Jojo Castero winds up and scores. A big one right there. His third of the season. RIT with some life. Just down by two at that point. Early in the third, Sacred Heart called for contact to the head on Grady Hobbs. So the Tigers get a five-minute major, a golden opportunity to close the gap in this one. But Sacred Heart's PK unit played it perfectly as the Tigers with a chance here trying to jam it home. But Justin Robbins able to keep it out of the net. Tigers would not score on the major and Sacred Heart would hold on for a 3-1 victory to even this series at a game apiece. We just, it didn't seem like we had our legs tonight right away. Our four check was, um, we were kind of letting them come out of their zone with some time and space and um, we gave them some odd man rushes and they capitalized on it and you just can't do that in playoffs. So that's why we, uh, we ended up digging that hole for ourselves. He's playing really well right now. We got to take his eyes away. Uh, any, for any goalie, it's tough to save a puck that you can't see. So we just got to make sure, and we got to make sure we're hitting the net. We're, we're getting a lot of chances right now where there are, it's great traffic, but we're just putting it wide or we're not shooting at times where we got it, like 16 shots tonight. That's not going to cut it as well. So we just got to do a better job getting to the net and get in front of his eyes because he's playing outstanding. Is there a better scenario than an elimination game in, in, with everything on the line? No, it's, there's nothing better. It's uh, do or die. Everyone's got to, you got to play your best to move on. So it's going to be exciting for everybody. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking about it in the locker room. I mean, you just got to dig deep and kind of go into the game tomorrow asking how much you want it because they showed that they want it tonight. And now we have our backs against the wall as well. So we're going to have to really regroup tomorrow and play a near perfect game if we're going to want to try and win because, um, yeah, none of us want our seasons to be over the seniors. and. Even we tell the freshmen, you don't want to throw away a year. It, it, it goes by fast, so um, we're hoping to get the guys going tomorrow and get a big win. Yeah, Tigers looking for a big win here tonight. Here's a look at the final numbers from game two. Sacred Heart outshot the Tigers 26-18 as Justin Robbins finished with 17 stops for the Pioneers. Tigers went one for four on the power play thanks to Jojo Casero's goal in the second. However, for the second straight game, RIT unable to capitalize on a five-minute major. The power has been out for Sacred Heart all series long. On the power play, they are oh for six on the man advantage. And one stat you won't see here, but it's made a big difference in this series. Sacred Heart has blocked 47 shots in the first two games. Big stat there. Well, this season comes down to tonight for RIT. With a preview of game three, RIT head coach Wayne Wilson is with our John Natulio. Johnny. All right, thank you so much, Kevin. Wayne, you've scored just two goals in two games. How does that change? How do you get more pucks to the net so there's better scoring opportunities? Yeah, well, our defensemen got to find better lanes to get it to the net. Our, our, I think our forwards got to shoot more. Like, we call them whips where you just yeah. spin and put pucks on the net versus uh, looking for something better. You know, you, you start saucering passes when they're, when they're packing it in, then all of a sudden, Pucks are going over people's sticks into the corner and you don't get those same shots. Harder for on our forecheck, I think, tonight. We've got to be more aggressive on our forecheck to put more 
puck pressure, create some more turnovers, and try and capitalize on that as well. Is this a game where you lean on leaders? You got a lot of seniors? Yeah, I mean, if you look at both teams, there's a lot of seniors and, and, and that on both teams. So we're both relying on our, our experience. But, yeah, you know, our big players got to come through, you know, the, our goal scorers. It's at that point now where we've got to just – uh, have faith in them and, and, and put the ball in their court and give them the opportunity to have some success. So that's what we're looking. We tinkered a little bit with some of our systems, but not much. And But it's all to try and put them in a better position to hopefully score some more goals. And that's my next question. At this point, do you change much? If it's two games in, how much do you change going into tonight? No, you, you've, you've played the whole year to form an identity, and you've got to kind of stay with it. Uh, there are subtle changes that you can make to, to hope to better yourself here, but I, I just think that you've got to stay true to who you are and, and uh, uh, you know, play to, play to your identity, play to what, you, what you've done well. And for us, it's a hard four check, it's, it's clean breakouts, it's, uh, you know, just winning special teams, it's those kind of things that we've got to come through tonight. In a game like this, scoring first, is that important for either, for certainly getting on the board first, getting momentum? I think it is, and I think it might be maybe more so for us. And, you know, not that they've scored a lot either, but I just think that, uh, you know, we got to feel like we're breaking the bubble here and break break out of uh, one goal or zero goals, uh, you know. So uh, uh, we, we want to we be better than that. And, uh, you know, it's always good to get the first goal, get the crowd on your side. Kind of relieve a little pressure on yourselves and then take it from there. These are fun games, right? I know it's it's stressful. Maybe is it stressful for you and the players a game three? Yeah, you're you're, you're yeah, it's, it's stressful, but you you got to enjoy the competition. I mean, this is this is what it's all about. That's why they have a best of three, hoping. I mean, everyone else is hoping it goes to three to make it interesting, and, and it is. So you've just got to enjoy the moment and just compete hard and, and see you can uh, play well in these type of situations. And I, I think we've got a number of players that uh, have uh, proven themselves in the past. i got a feeling you'll be in Utica next weekend, Coach. I'm looking forward to it, but it, this is going to be a hard grind here. I hope we're not working you overtime tonight. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't mind. This is, a, this is fun. I don't mind working OT, buddy. Good. We're looking forward to the challenge all tonight. All right. That does it here with head coach Wayne Wilson with RIT. Kevin, let's send it back to you. All all right, Johnny, thanks so much. The other three quarterfinal series wrapped up last night as AIC, Mercyhurst, and Air Force all completed two game sweeps to advance to the conference semifinals. AIC still in the hunt for its third consecutive AHA tournament championship. Yellow Jackets advanced following a 6 2 victory over Bentley on Saturday. How about Mercyhurst? They've won seven in a row. They move on to Utica after yesterday's 3 1 victory over Canisius. Lakers will face AIC, and Air Force needed overtime in game one and game two to escape past Army. Falcons now await the winner of tonight's game. Should be fun. Still to come here on pregame live, we'll look back on the monumental vote from earlier this year that will make RIT hockey an even more attractive option to potential recruits. Plus, RIT's Caden Winters wrestled for a Division III national championship last night. We'll show you how he fared in Iowa. That and much more on the way as we get you set for the third and final game between RIT and Sacred Heart at 5.05. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. here on pregame live this series is the fourth time RIT and Sacred Heart have met in the playoffs Sacred Heart band is here the Tigers won the AHA championship in 2010 Pioneers won a first round series here in 2018 and then RIT returned the favor in 2019 advancing past the Pioneers in the quarters if you're just joining us here tonight Tigers will once again go with number 30 Tommy Scarfoni between the pipes Scarfoni will make his 10th straight start he's 7 8 and 1 on the year allowing an average of 2.45 goals per game with a save percentage of of 92, he has been good for Sacred Heart. Head coach C.J. Maritola is going to ride number 31, Justin Robbins, the junior from Alpine, New Jersey, has played extremely well the first two games of this series, allowing just two goals while stopping 42 shots. With more on the Pioneers as they prepare for this decisive game three, our John DeTulio has traveled to the opposite side of the rink yep. and rejoins us now with Sacred Heart head coach C.J. Maritola. Johnny. 
All right, thanks so much, Kevin. We were talking, and this this series is it, it's going to be chippy tonight, is it not? The first you can see it building, right, for tonight. Uh, definitely, it's going to be two teams going at it physically. There's a lot on the line tonight, and that's what happens when there's so much riding on it. Let's talk about how your team responded with their backs to the wall last night. Yeah, I anticipated a great response from our group, as we talked about yesterday. We've been in this situation before. Um, we got to our game quick. We got off to a strong start. We got some lucky bounces, got some goals early, and we settled into our game. You're the least penalized team in the country. You've taken two five-minute majors. Is that nerves, jitters, trying to do too much? How do you explain that? I think it's a little excitement. Uh, not part of our game. A little disappointed that's crept in at this uh, this time. But we've talked about it as a group, and we know uh, you know, every play matters, and we can't put ourselves in those situations. Just talk about the defensive effort. 47 block shots in two games. Yeah, our defensemen and forwards are doing a great job of protecting Justin and Nett. Um, trying to get sticks on a lot of pucks, you know. RIT is such a good offensive team that you really have to try to deny everything that you can. You've kind of stymied them. Two goals in two games. How are you guys slowing down this high-powered offense? Well, we try to play fast and defend really hard. That's kind of our identity. Um, try to possess the puck, and if you have it, they don't. So that's what we're trying to do, possession. Game. Now, there's a trend going right now. You've got Mercyhurst advancing. You've got Air Force advancing. So the seventh and sixth seed, what's the key for the fifth seed to advance to Utica? Tonight, it's just going to be, we got to be ready right from the drop of that puck. We got to play a very purposeful game and execute what we want to do. And we got to get to that game quick. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. How are the kids feeling going into tonight? I, I think they're a lot less nervous than I am. <laughs> I love it. CJ, always great catching up with you. Best of luck tonight. That does it here from the Sacred Heart side, Kevin. Let's send it back to you. All right, Johnny, thanks so much. We appreciate CJ and all the coaches here in Atlantic Hockey for their time. Well, since joining the Division I rank 17 years ago with men's hockey and 10 years ago with its women's program, RIT has been competitive on the ice despite not being permitted to offer athletic scholarships because of its multi-divisional status. But after years of pleading its case with the NCAA to change the bylaws, the proposal was brought to vote at January's NCAA convention, and thanks to overwhelming support this time around, RIT is now even more attractive to hockey recruits. New York. They're going dancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit. I would say hats off to all of our alumni of both the men's and women's hockey program. They have really laid the foundation for these young men and women who are involved in the program now and what they were able to do successfully without financial aid. But keeping up without offering scholarships has been more of a challenge lately. I don't believe it! You know, the NCAA has changed quite a bit in a lot of different things how they do. It first uh, came in with the cost of attendance, so players were able to, whatever the school decided was that cost, receive up to $5,000 uh, after they've received their scholarship. So it was an additional $5,000. Then uh, I think the trans portal was, uh, uh, transfer portal was next. And, and so players were able to uh, transfer at, at any time, really, one time transfer. And then the name, image, likeness, where they were able to start making money off of that. And so we just kept falling further and further behind because of all those we weren't able to do any of that. We were in multiple conversations with with recruits and we're down the pipeline with them and at a certain point you know I heard countless times you know if you had money or you know this other schools offering me this like we love everything about what you're telling us but to come out of school debt free is a big deal these days. In January RIT was one of five multi-divisional schools at the NCAA convention to propose a change to the bylaws that would allow these institutions the ability to award scholarships to their Division I athletes. The vote on proposal number four is... ...388 votes yes, 18 no, 39 abstain. Proposal number four is adopted. The reasoning for us to be able to give scholarships uh, was very sound and logical and uh, I was very optimistic but you don't know how everyone else is feeling about it and obviously when you saw the end result because really when it doesn't affect you I think a lot of people just abstain. I think obviously the way it, it turned out with the vote that uh, it was pretty clear to everyone that uh, 
this needed to be passed and uh, we're very grateful for that. Both programs will now be permitted to offer a maximum of 18 scholarships each. And that is the goal, but how the university will handle financing those 36 scholarships is still being explored. I've started the initial conversation with our two um, coordinators who work with athletic development, so started that conversation with them, but it's something we're going to work on exploring over the next couple of months to see who might be interested um, in helping fund RIT men's women's hockey in the future. So we're going to be looking for some alumni and some sponsors and some donors to get involved with this program and get involved immediately. The ice is finally level for RIT hockey, as they now have everything they need to attract the best and to consistently be among the best programs in the nation. I think in the women's side, there's not a lot of arenas that women play in that are like this. And to, to couple the two, the academics and the athletics, and be at a hockey school with unbelievable fan support and community support is, is like, we have the outside assembled to my puzzle now. Um, so now it's just like, let's put the inner pieces in and, and really get the picture that we want. And I just think we're going to be able to take another step forward and, uh, um, you know, maybe it won't happen right uh, for next year, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll take a good stride forward and uh, I think uh, we'll be able to compete for, with the uh, not only the best players on the ice, but also the best players in the classroom and, and uh, really be able to sell and and uh, we don't have any more excuses anymore, but, but uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. Big things ahead for the RIT hockey programs here, thanks to that decision. Meanwhile, RIT Wrestling finished seventh with a school record in points at the Division III Wrestling Championships in Iowa on Saturday. Senior Zach Steddeford and junior Austin Lamb finished in the top eight of their weight classes to earn All-American honors. Senior Caden Winters wrestled for a national championship in the 157-pound weight class last night, but he would fall to Nathan Lackman from Rhode Island College in the final seconds of overtime in the title bout. Winters earns All-American honors as he finishes as the national runner-up. Congratulations to all. Division Three men's lacrosse today, number one RIT facing 19th ranked Ursinus down in Collegeville, Pennsylvania this afternoon. We have the highlights for you in a game that was supposed to be played yesterday, but the weather was lousy. So Tigers led 3-0 after one. They picked things up in the second quarter. Quinn commanded big day. One of his five goals to lead the Tigers there. RIT up 5-1. Then later it's going to be Ryan Barnable with the goal. Tigers in control. He had two goals, two assists on the afternoon. Tigers outscored the Bears 5-2 in the quarter as Clifford Gaston finishes here with the pretty movie at three goals and two assists. RIT 12-6 winners. They've now won 23 in a row, dating back to the shortened 2020 season. They visit Ohio Wesleyan on Saturday. Still to come on pregame live, RIT associate head coach Dave Insulaco will join us to break down the keys to game number three. Plus, if you missed the game last night, we'll show you how Sacred Heart has forced to Tonight's decisive game three. That is next on your home for Tiger Hockey. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Get it in down low. Uh -oh. That's going to come ahead. Joffy trying to get back. Here's the shot. There and Sacred Heart is on the board. 1 0 Pioneers. 12 50 remaining here in the second. Shea advancing. Shea trying the wrap around. No, he'll bring it to the point. Shea dishing it down low. Oh. And another save. And there the rebound yep. in front. 2 0 Sacred Heart. It's the Tigers just could not clear it. Sends it back up to Logan Britt. His shot going to be knocked down. And Walker sent flying there. Well, you called it, Gino. They're getting out work. There's no question they're getting out work here in the first eight and a half minutes. And now it's three nothing as Tuck, as they announce the oh. goal, Tuck, as on the ice that whole time was Kobe Walker, and they never blew it dead. grabbed his knee. Here's Casero. Let's go get it. Yes. On the power play, the Tigers are on the board. Jojo Casero makes it 3 1. All right, game on. Here we go. And that is the Sacred Heart bench there, banging their sticks in approval. Tigers come up with it eventually, but boy, that took about 20 seconds at least. Shot, knocked down, rebound. Oh. Where is it? Oh Man, my God! Scramble. No whistle, and then a Tiger gets shoved off the ice, and it never crossed the goal line. It's at the red line to blast it in. Hamaker gloving it out. 
Puck goes in front. Oh. Calverly just goes wide. Oh. Shot. The puck goes right over through the crease. Oh, it was there, Gino. Michael Giannakis in his own end. And we will see you tomorrow night. And here we are, the only quarterfinal left to be decided in Atlantic Hockey. AIC completed the sweep of Bentley. Mercyhurst won its seventh straight as they disposed of Canisius and Air Force knocked out third-seeded Army with two overtime victories. Again, AIC will face Mercyhurst in the first semi next Friday. Air Force awaits the winner of our game here tonight. It's welcoming you back inside the Gene Policini Center here at RIT, where you're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live, presented by... Taylor, the builders, as we bring in John and Gene. And guys, there are 10 seniors on this Tiger squad. They haven't tasted a championship during their time here, but Dan Willett, I think, said it best last night. No matter what year you are, you want, do not want to waste this opportunity to get to the semifinals because there's no guarantees you're ever going to get back in your career. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, all those said nine are dressed tonight. As uh, John, we're happy to be joined by David Salako, the assistant coach. He is ringside. And, Dave, appreciate your time. And the million-dollar question here, how do we generate more offense for the Tigers here tonight? We just got to do a better job of moving pucks out of our own end and getting them up to our forwards and being more efficient in the neutral zone uh, at reading their forecheck and either going quick or, or slowing it down a little bit and going through our progressions. But our puck movement out of our own end and through the neutral zone needs to be much better so our, our forwards have an opportunity to create offensively. Dave, in a game like this, scoring first, just the way it's shaping up, maybe paramount for both clubs. How important is it for your team to start fast tonight? Well, we want to get off to a good start. There's, there's no question about it. Um, scoring first is, is huge if you look at hockey and the analytics, um, you know, your winning percentage increases exponentially by scoring first and it, and it provides a sense of ease and calmness for us. But no matter what happens, you know, if we score first or they're on the board first, we, we just got to stay even keel, stay grounded and, and, and stick to our identity and, and work, work hard throughout the, the course of 60 minutes. Yeah, Dave, we were just talking about how this Tiger team, 10 seniors on this team, I, I would imagine you don't have to say all that much here uh, moments before this game. No, our, you know, our meeting this morning, uh, minor adjustments were made, and we just got to play to our identity, and, and our big players need to step up and, and, and carry the load for us, and, and our other guys need to, need to work hard and, and provide supplemental scoring for us. Dave, appreciate your time, and uh, go get them tonight. Thanks, guys. David Salako, the assistant coach here for RIT. As John, uh, certainly they have leaders on the Sacred Heart team two now Ryan Steele really not available game one but he was back in game two centering that line and our player to watch Braden Tuck two points last night the team captain team captain one of their top scorers on this team they've got playmakers when they lost Steele even talking with uh, CJ Maritolo you uh, yesterday he said it hurt there's no question but Tuck is a guy that they've leaned on look at his numbers 12 goals 14 assists just like RIT, playmakers need to come up and make big plays. We saw Tuck step up big time last night for the Pioneers. Interesting, if you're listening carefully there, Wayne Wilson and David Zalaco talked about the defense carrying the puck up here tonight. And, John, if that's going to be the case, is JoJo Casero the best offensive defenseman for RIT? I don't think it's even close. I think he's got the best shot, and I, I just think he needs to shoot more. We saw him last night connect. And listen, even talking with Wayne, they need to get pucks to the net, even if it's coming from the blue line, they need to get a lot of traffic and get pucks in the net. And we've watched him evolve this year, the transfer, three goals, five assists, and he really jump-started RIT last night with that goal. Yeah, as uh, Kevin, they say nothing beats a game seven. This is a game seven, essentially. A deciding game three, puck drop coming up here at 5.05. We can't wait. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hey, guys, if you're wondering, RIT three and three all time in game threes, but 0-2 here at the Policini Sacred Heart has lost their last five game threes. Thanks to Nate Rowan, our statistician, for that information. When we return here on Pregame Live, the tournament moves two hours east of here next weekend. We'll let you know how you can be a part of Championship Weekend next. This is RIT Sports Zone Pregame Live.
Back here on pregame live next weekend, the Atlantic Hockey Tournament shifts to Utica, New York in the Adirondack Bank Center for the first time ever, as it was announced earlier this year. That is where the final four teams in the league will be competing for that right there, the Jack Riley Championship Trophy and an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Hey, the AHA semifinals will begin on Friday at 4 with the top-seeded AIC Yellow Jackets taking on seven-seeded Mercyhurst. Air Force will face the winner of tonight's game in the second semifinal next Friday. And, of course, the AHA Championship will be decided Saturday night Get your tickets now at EmpireStateTicks.com. It should be fun no matter who's there. Well, that'll do it for pregame live. Up next, the third and final game of this quarterfinal series between RIT and Sacred Heart to determine who moves on and who goes home. We'll see you back here for the intermission report. Until then, enjoy the game. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now.